All right, so what I've done is used the marking gauge lightly to mark out a line that is just under the width of this board here. And the reason for that is that I'm doing half blind dovetails and you want to have a little bit of a, an outside edge here when you're doing half blind, otherwise they're not half blind. <laughs> so I, I have that marked out. I'm not really using that marking gauge line for anything more than setting up my 45, which is what this is here. And it's a combination plane and I'm going to use this to cut the rabbit across the end. And I like cutting a shallow rabbit when I'm going to be doing dovetails because that shoulder makes it really easy to lay out and or uh, to lay out for the pins after you've cut the tails. So that's what I'm going to do now is use the 45 to cut the rabbit here and I'll flip it over and do the other side and that should hopefully be all I need to do for that before I need to dovetail. One thing is sometimes it's a good idea to just cut this backside corner when you're going to be using this plane for cutting the cross grain because it's not a skewed iron and it does have a knicker here but that only does so much and a lot of times this does end up blowing out the back so that's why I usually mark that with a knife just to make sure I don't do that. So I'm doing a couple of passes backwards because of that knicker I just want to make sure that I can actually make that score first. And since this is the first one, I need to figure out the depth. <laughs> There, now hopefully that should be more than enough of a rabbit to make sure that we get that uh, nice and lined up. So as you can see, once you get it set up, you just bang these things out like crazy. So then you can kind of see how this is going to be used when we go to lay out the pins. So we'll cut the tails here on, on this board. So these will be, you know, shaped like dovetails. And then this board will go on here. And once we cut the dovetails, we'll trace those out to do the pins here. So that'll be the next step for dovetailing. but. There's one more thing I got to do before I get that far. So that last thing that I need to do, and I actually need to do this on all four pieces, is plow a groove for the plywood back. And 
in this instance, it needs to be about three quarters of an inch, a little bit over is okay. Under is less than ideal, but basically I need a, a three quarters of an inch gap between the back edge of the plywood and the back of the case. So I have two marks here and I've set up my 45 for that. Um, if you want to see how to set up a 45 for plowing a groove, um, I have another video uh, that I've showed how to do that. So if you wanted to go watch that one to see how I set up a 45 for plowing a groove, feel free to head on over there and do that. But that's not the intent here. I'm just going to go ahead and do it since I've already set it up. And this groove will be three quarters of an inch from the back on all four pieces and it should be pretty simple. And then I will be setting this about a quarter of an inch deep since I don't need to go too far. But this depth is definitely not critical. It's just nice, nice to be close, you know. <laughs> that should do it. There you go. Now we've got all of our grooves plowed, so now we can think about starting some dovetails. <laughs> 